Using some of the ideas we've already looked at, I'm going to create a simple atmospheric woodland scene for you. I positioned some masking tape around just to frame the landscape. I'm going to do a simple drawing and I'm using a water soluble crayon. So all I need to do is a simple outline of where we're going. I'm going to have a little woodland path there coming through the trees. There we are. That's all we need. Now what I need to do now is to put some masking tape and simply block out the areas of the land. So when I put the sky in, the paint won't run down over the land areas. So this allows me to have a bit of control over where the paint's been deposited. There we are. Simple as that. It won't tear the paper when I take it off. It wouldn't dare. So let's just put in the wet and wet sky now. I'm going to start with some raw sienna as an underpainting. And we just pretend we're painting the windowsill, so as easy as that. But this is where a large brush is very important. Putting in very, very quickly. I'm covering all the paper. Otherwise, when I put the darker clouds in, the atmospheric sky, it'll stop running where the paper was dry. I want to be in control. So I want a little bit more raw sienna. Just add a bit more colour in there, just brush out that thicker deposit of paint. And I'm going to rinse a brush and I'm going to make a mix up of Payne's Grey with a little bit of Lisbon Crimson and a touch of blue. So let's just do some simple strokes like that to create an atmospheric background. I'm adding more water to the brush and more blue for the left hand side just to get that variation in colour. Just creating some atmosphere in the back of this. Now let's have a look. A little bit more Payne's Grey on the right hand side. So there we are. I'm just going to use a tissue and take off the surplus that's running down. And what we need to do now is to put in some atmospheric trees. So I'm going to use a one inch flat for this, with some Payne's Grey, some Cerulean Blue, and just a little touch of red. So here we go, I'm going to get no definition off. That's not right, I need some more Payne's Grey and some more red. It's important to spend some time getting your colour right. That's better. I just want to drop that in like that. I'm not going to get any definition because I want this misty background. I just need a little bit more red. That's a bit blue. Let's put another one in there like that. It's just going to fuse in and give that soft texture that we're looking for. Now back over to this side and let's do the same thing. Just using the corner of the brush, just dancing from side to side, just to creating some tree structure like that. We'll have another one there. It's just going to blend in all softly because the underpainting is still wet. So I'm not getting any definition, nor do I want any. Right, now let's do some circular movements, just to indicate some foliage there. And I'm going to add a bit of Payne's Grey and a bit of Burnt Sienna, just to vary the colours. All I'm doing is circular movements here, just to create a few trees in the background like that. I always think of this as putting in the undercoat. Now, a bit more burnt sienna, a bit of Payne's Grey. I'm just going to put a bit more definition there. That, perhaps a little bit there. And at this stage, I think that will do, except what I'm going to do now is to scratch out. So let's put in some tree structures. I'm just scratching out with my thumbnail. If you do it too early, it fills in and it goes black. I don't want that effect. In fact, it's doing it now, so I shall count to 30. And then we'll go again. Just want to hint of some structure in the back there in the wood. I've worked across the painting and I've scratched in some tree structure on the right hand side. 
what we're going to do now is to take off the tape. Don't pull it off too quickly, or you may tear the paper if you don't use a good quality paper. But uh, it should be all right. There we are. The next stage is the paint in the foreground. So I'm using a, a light washer bra sienna, and I'm just wetting the paper like that. A bit more water. All I'm doing is doing a wet underpainting to allow me to drop some darker colour greens and so on into the that wetting wet underpainting. So I want some Payne's grey now, a little bit of that hooker's green and a little bit of raw sienna. And we'll just drop this in like that. Same over here. And I want to switch to the pointed brush. I'm not going to get any definition here. I'm just going to flick it back like that, just to create a bit of tonal value in that foreground like that. I'm just shaping, working around the path area. I want some Payne's Grey now and a bit of alizarin Crimson. And I want some nice dark colour in this foreground like that. Just add a bit of Payne's Grey and a bit of um, Burnt Umber just to add a bit more texture in that foreground. I'm going to use my knuckle now just to create some interesting texture in that foreground. It's a useful little technique this, create some interest in the foreground. There we are. I'm going to find the large pointed brush and I'm going to just flick up a few strokes like that, that's some grasses growing in the foreground. It should be just a little bit darker. Do it again, fan the brush, and just flick up one or two bits of grass like that. Indicates stubble growing in which you get in virtually every wood that I walk in. That will do for that. Using a tissue to a wedge, I'm just removing some of that paint. Creates an interesting effect on the foreground. Right, I'm going to put in some tree structures now using the rigger with a mix of Payne's Grey and burnt umber. As I come forward, I'll put in some larger trees. I'll have one down here, I think. This will be our specimen tree. careful how you structure the trees. Make them look like a tree like that. Some darker panes grey at the base. If one comes forward to achieve recession, the trees have to be darker. I think we'll have another one coming up here, a smaller one perhaps. And a few simpler ones there. And obviously put a bit of shadow at the base. Just wiggle your rigger, add a bit of shadow, a bit of texture in that foreground. And flick a few bits up like that. There's always something growing around the base. They weren't planted there last night. There we are. 